honored to meet you. Thank you. Today we will um, cover Comfort Women Part Two and also End of the War. 젊은 학생들이 이런 옛날에 일어난 일들에 대해서 잘 모르는데 이거를 어, 역사적인 수업을 통해서뿐 아니라 직접 그 피해자들을 만남으로써 더 확실히 알수 있고 어, 그 학생들이 피해자들에게 어, 당신들의 이야기를 기억하겠다고 약속을 하게 되거든요. 그 과정을 통해서 어, 인권 문제에 대해서 다시 한번 생각하게 되고 역사적인 어, 역사의 중요성이라든지 역사에서 배울 수 있는 교훈에 대해서 더 진지하게 알수 있는 계기가 될것 같습니다. 그게 궁극적인 목적이 될것 같습니다. The reason why I entered the internship is because in Panama they we don't have enough education about history in general. I, I was really intrigued because the only thing that I heard is that the World War II was just for the Holocaust and the Jewish people. Then I, when I see this internship, I really got intrigued how the Asians were involved also in, in, this, in, this, in this event, in history. Um, I had a Japanese friend told, tell me that um, Japanese uh, soldiers will rape Chinese women. Was that, is that correct? Yeah, so they have like a, like a long, like the older generation has like this long held uh, feud with the Japanese. So I think this internship ties in with that feud. And I'd like to know more about, you know, East Asian history and World War II and the comfort women and their story. Um, the Japanese government has since continued to deny their responsibility for such actions. It, uh, it denied the compulsory drafting and recruiting of Korean women until one, um, 1992. Uh, but in 1992, uh, many Japanese military documents related to comfort women were discovered in Japan and also in the U.S. These are more personal things and these things have happened and they cannot be taken back. Like say somebody robs a bank the money can be returned, and there, there, there will be people, and there will be camera footage. The, the lives aren't involved, but here, somebody's entire life was at stake. Mm -hmm. According to the United Nations, we say 200,000, anywhere from 50,000 to 200,000. 200,000, 200,000, 200,000 uh, former sex slaves. Some um, Korean NGOs um, made effort to establish a memorial for compared women in Palisade Park, New Jersey. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
맞습니까? 예. 네. 할머니, 네. 네. 우리 <웃음> 닥터 아트 네. 아트 박사 기억 나세요? 지난번에 우리 갔을 때요. 예. 네. 안녕하세요. 동남하십니까? 지금 할머니 뵙고 싶다고 합니다. <웃음> 네, 한번더 봤으면 좋겠다고 말씀하는데요. 저도 그렇게 많어요. 네, 오늘 학생들 여기 학생들하고 같이 인터뷰해 주셔서 너무 감사드린다고. 이 친구가 통역할 거거든요. 통역하는 친구가 할머니 잠시만요. 그러면 잠깐 쉬셨다가 통역하고 그 다음에 또 계속 말씀해 주시고 지금 그렇게 해주세요. 감사합니다. 여기 둘이 앉아 있는 학생이 다 외국 학생이에요. 어, 한 명은 중국계 학생이고 한 명은 어, 둘다 중국계 학생이거든요. 근데 한국말을 못 하고 그래서 저희가 영어로 다 통역을 해야 돼요. 잠시만요. Hi, my name is Ashley, and I'm very honored to be working with you guys on this project. Okay, so what's your first question? Um, could you ask her to tell us about where she w o r k i n Yeah, 할머니 첫 질문은요. 어디서 태어나시고 어디서 자라셨는지 알고 싶습니다. 음, 제가 원래 부산시 보수동이라는 데서 출생했습니다. 보수동에서 태어나서 아무 데도 못 가보고 그게서 열다섯 살 때신 것도요. 그래 열다섯 살 목들 대업에 그리 집이 있으면 아무 너무 학교 가고 싶어 갖고 공부를 하고 싶은데 못 하니까 집에 들한테 열다섯 살 때신데 울었어요. 울다 울다가 열다섯 살 때신 울다가 학교도 못 가고 일본 사람한테 끌려갔대. 경기에 나갔다가 그것도 두말 없이 끌려간 거예요. 끌려가는데 지간 거예요. 이거 타라 맞고 두 손을 다 묶고 발 뒤집다고 다 묶고 이렇게 묶여가지고 간 거예요. You ask her in the building, was there any windows or anything? Like what was her surroundings like when she got into the building? Okay. 그 안에 들어간 데는 딱 사람 하나 그저 둘씩 요래 자는 조그만한 거기 문 다정 밑에 장판 까는 고런 까는 까딱 한두 개씩 고래기 집이 안 컸어요. 아 창문 같은 거 없어고 그냥 문짝 하나에다가 다다미 두개 그렇게요? 예 주기 비내리 치고 이래 방 차차 해놨습니다. 그래 그거 안에 들어가서는 에 여기서 이제 자고 여기 있어야 된다. 에 와와 하더라 해. 그게 무슨 소리인가 그때 군대들이 막 나옵니다. 나가더니 그때는 뭐 엄청 못하지 어찌 그랬어요. 그래서 자기 마음대로 여자들이 있는 여자들 제일 마음대로 데려오고 저들은 희롱합니다. 이말다 부끄러워 못하겠습니다. 예. 이거 하면 아까 들을 수 있지 않습니까? 예. 도망도 못하고 감도 못하고 그것들을 죽어라 하면 죽는 그거를 해야 돼. 해야 돼요. 그 놈들이 우리 지기도 말 한마디 못하는데 누구한테도 말 못하는데 그런데 지옥으로 간 거예요. 우리가. 그 이양사가 한 대가 어디 사람 살 때입니까? 제 개인 생각은 그래요. 예. 이양사가 사람 사는 또 집이 아니고 예. 사람 닮은 또 살짝이라고 난 그렇게 생각해요. 우리는 중국에 해방된 거 몰랐어요. 예. 해방된 걸 모르고 응. 사흘 한 사흘 지났어. 사흘 지났어 알았어요. How did she uh, start telling her story um, to everybody? 할머니가 언제부터 할머니 얘기를 하시기 시작하셨나요? 저는 원래 한국을 안 올라고 중국에 중국에서 국적을 받고 중국에서 살았어요. 그랬는데 음, 나 먹고 어어저 살이 맞은 신랑도 죽고 하니까 할수 없어 제가 너무 부모 형제 그럴 걸 하니까 왔어요. 어머 뭐라니까 어머 형제 다 죽었지. 저도 죽었다고 사망 신고를 했고 그래서 국적에 없지. 정말 곤란이 많지요. So she. You never told your family, your sons, or your husband about what happened to you when you were younger? 
남편이나 아들분들에게 얘기를 안 하신 거죠? 예. Still 앉아가 지기도 우리 고생 한번 한번 해야 돼요. 내가 지금 이제 나이도 지금 이제 80몇 이렇게 남의 집에서 오라 그래서 왔거든. 데리러 와서. 그래서 여기서 미국에서 하이 의원들이 와 갖고 인터뷰를 한번 했는데 이것이 말이지 인터뷰를 한 것이 텔레비에 나갔어요. 그래 갖고 막 자식들이 막저 미국에서 막 저기 뭐냐 베이징에서 막덜 보고서 왜 엄마가 말이지 왜 그런 사람이었냐고. 그래서 이걸 막 우리나라에서 지금 사회에서는 아직도 이 세대는 수치스럽게 생각한단 말이야. 그랬는데 그래서 지금 우리 애들이 나하고 and your strength is very inspiring to me. 이 학생은 이제 할머니와 이렇게 얘기할 수 있는 거에 대해서 큰 영광을 느끼고 너무나 감사하다고 이제. 일본의 법정에도 내가 두 번씩이나 갔다 왔어요. 그렇지만 학생들이 이렇게 나서기 때문에. 내가 오늘 너무 기뻐요. 너무 기쁘고 누구한테 말할 수 없는 기쁨이 있어요. 우리 나라가 없었기 때문에 그렇게 갔지만 이제 와서 나는 거예요. 그렇기 때문에 학생들이 아주 다 나아가는 되어갖고 우리 나라를 잘 지키고 전쟁이 없는 나라, 병아리 없이 사는 나라 앞으로 절대 우리 집은 이런 아픔 you let me know again what the bravest person in the world is and uh, I, I promise I'm gonna remember your story forever and uh, I'm gonna tell as many people as I can so that more people know, know about this so I, I hope we can bring the justice to, to you to all the First, I like to say that I'm very honored to be part of this program. It has been a very priceless experience for me. And um, uh, I like to thank all the people who made this program possible. First and foremost, I like to thank all the comfort women who participated in the interview. Uh, we understand that it has been it can be very hard for them to record their memories from the past while their human rights were violated and uh, to tell the story over and over again. But they were they understood our um, purpose of the program and and were very courageous and brave to come forward and to share their stories with us. Chu and Cassandra, could you come out? That the war isn't over. She said that she wanted us. She said that she's never going to stop fighting for an apology. It really changed me how these people treat these women. It already started 
sharing this information with my family that they were really amazed while all this happened to these women in Korea. That I want to help other people, like in her similar situation, and fight for their rights. Well, if whether or not I would be able, I, I would be willing to leave the comforts of my home to go out and fight for these women. And before this, this semester, the answer would probably have been a no, but then now the answer is a definite yes. I, the, the interview changed the way I thought, think about life and about humanity in general. I had so many questions, so many, it was all a mess in my head, but the interview, so it, it answered a lot of questions for me and now I see life very differently, now I see people differently. It is small step, but uh, it will make uh, the great progress for human rights in the world. <laughs>
feels incredible as it's supposed to, but also I think that the important thing is not the resolution, but the actions that we're about to take with regards to the resolution, the things that we will do in the future. I think those are the more important things, and this pride, this happiness that we feel right now, I think that will propel us and motivate us towards doing some great things for the comfort women and for the recognition of the crimes done against them in the future. Can you show your resolution? Oh, yes. I feel excited. I'm kind of nervous and I'm excited to meet uh, Miss Hudson Lee, who uh, I interviewed uh, a year ago almost, uh, six months ago now. Um, I was really touched by speaking to her and her story really affected me a lot. So it's exciting to see her finally. Thank you. Thank you for coming. How are you? We are so proud to have you here. We are so proud. Thank you. Thank you. Come. Come with us. Let me show you where we're going to sit. I'm the one who thanks you. <laughs> How was your trip? Oh, it was good. It is my honor to be with the survivors of the Holocaust and especially with our special, special citizen of the world, Ms. Bok Soon Yi. Thank you so much for being here and helping us to educate not just our students, but the world about the atrocities that you experienced. We could not have had this event or this experience on the campus without the assistance and ongoing daily support of the people from the case, the Korean American Civic Empowerment Group. And I'd like to call the president of that group, Donald Trump Kim, to please come up. Some words ago. The Comfortable Holocaust Center and the Korean American Civic Empowerment will continue to educate about Comfortable One until Japan officially apologizes and accepts responsibility for its crimes. We have the people here today. A Holocaust survivor, Hanny Liebman, a Holocaust survivor, Ethel Katz, and Oxen Eel, a comfort woman. We've asked her to come here to share her story with you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out today uh, to meet with me tonight. I was born in Busan, Korea. Not a twin or calabash, it can be cut and uncut. You get cut, mother, he cut that in the year. You will have ten be mother, car mother, man, cut on and dead. Go over and hear the other time, I get to you. I think I will not have the to but 
한국 딸들은 몇주 열한 살부터 끌어갔어. 열한 살, 열한 살이 뭐입니까? 예, 열한 살부터 열한 살 열두, 열두, 열네 이런 어린 것들 다 가져갔어요. 그 가지다 다 죽겠지. 전에가 뭘 했지요? 이자가 오늘 죽겠지, 내 죽겠지 모르겠는데 이 한끗에 와서 미국, 미국에 와갖고 좀 돌봐달라고 오직 하면 여기까지 왔겠습니까? 우리 할머니들이 다 죽기를 기다리는데 다 죽어도 이 문제를 해결해야 됩니다. You have my word that as long as I'm in office, as long as my colleagues uh, who were here earlier are in office, we're going to keep this issue alive and we're going to make sure that we continue to pass resolutions and continue to do whatever we can um, to make this issue uh, irrelevant to the current uh, Discussion. The truth is, many comfort women perished during the war. Many survivors, because of sexual trauma, were left infertile or had a sexually transmitted disease. Many committed suicide. Tonight, whether we like it or not, whether we want to be or not, the fact of the matter is that we are all survivors. And it is our obligation to carry this story forward. I'm truly honored to be here this evening, and I sincerely thank you. But they made a promise to each person they spoke to. We got a very strict ceremony. You stand up, you take the person by the hand, you look him in the eye and say, I promise I will never forget you. I will tell your story to my friends, to my family, to everyone I possibly could. And we guarantee to her and we guarantee to what Oxon Hill said that who's going to pick up the fight and the people who will pick up the fight are the interns. I'd like all the interns here to please stand up. To be recognized. When I interview this woman, I feel like I was not only interviewing a comfort woman, I was like talking to my uh, grandma who is in her 80s and she was telling me about this horrible, horrible story. This grandma told me that she wanted nothing but a formal and sincere apology from Japan. What I did was when I was presented with this internship, I was given the opportunity to tell my story artistically. So I took the chance to actually come up with something that would be symbolistic to the story that I was told. Throughout all these years, they had no voice. So their stories really wasn't heard of and they're still being rejected and denied. It's pretty much my view, my way of telling the story. Tell her that we will continue and as we continue to strive for betterment for them, the survivors, that even if she pass on victory, there will be victory. They will, they will give the victory. They will eventually.